the whole armor of God. Look at your neighbor and tell them the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. <laughs> Not a piece of it. Yes, but the whole armor of. And I know you've been hearing these things since you are, you are somewhere in Sunday school. If you us was in Sunday school yesterday at work, we had a friend who was telling us, I've just dropped my my child to the Sabbath school. So you're asking, what is a Sabbath school? <laughs> so this day she was telling us, oh, that's the equivalent of a Sunday school. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe there are people here who went to a Sabbath school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and now you're here. Uh, so we've been hearing this since we were in the Sunday school or the Sabbath school. Um, <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 to 18. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. You see, we are already being told. You see, let's go back to 12. For we wrestle not against flesh. So God is starting by telling us that we wrestle. So there is a fight. And you remember even Jesus saying in this word, you have many troubles. So all these things that happen, at least we are prepared. We are not coming. You know, we had a lecturer in Kenya School of Law who is to tell us, I'm about to release you to the unsuspecting public. <laughs> they hope that you know what you're going, that you know what you're telling them, you know. <laughs> and so we used to always laugh when somebody asks you something and you just say, these are the unsuspecting public. <laughs> yeah, so... God has not left us to just be, you know, in suspect and don't know what to do. So he is telling us there is a fight to fight. Uh, and so we wrestle not against his flesh. But so now verse 13. Let's go now to 13. So wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You know, we may be able to withstand in the evil day, meaning it's coming. You, you hear in countries, you know, countries say that, you know, the best time to prepare for peace is when there is peace. For war, it's when there is peace. You start preparing for it. So even here, we know that the evil days are coming. For some of us, maybe today is a evil day, you know. <laughs> it has already come. You're not waiting for it. So you maybe need another gear. Today we need to talk about that we need to prepare for the evil days to come. Meaning they'll keep coming until the end. Um... So, and having done that, to uh, done all, to stand. So, you see, you need to stand, you know, you need to, uh, to withstand the day of evil and still stand. And pastor was teaching us in the morning that this means that when you go to a battle, you need to come out of that battle better. You're not just, you see, he says, the Bible says that we are more than conquerors. What means that is that I go to a battle and I come out like nothing happened. That I'm coming out better. You know, I'm, I stand that after, after withstanding all the evil, I still stand. I'm not going to withstand even by the time I'm coming out. Hey, I'm almost limping. <laughs> I was telling us about, you know, the people who say that I've been in a warfare. And when you look at them, they are really beaten. They are totally out of a warfare. Serious warfare. They have been praying and they are, you know, they are, their weight is gone. But pastor was telling us in the morning that we need to get to a place that... We get into these battles, we win them, and we come out like nothing happened. So we withstand evil, and after all, we stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Um, you know, in more simpler, not KGV versions, we'll say the belt of truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15. And your feet showed with the prepared preparation of the gospel of seed, uh, of peace. So you see, it's with the, uh, let's just, uh, 15, with the preparation of the gospel. Not with the gospel, but with the preparation of the gospel, and we look into that. Uh, verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Uh, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Yeah, so we are more than conquerors. And today we are going to be looking at 
How has God prepared? You know, the Bible says the whole armor of God, meaning God has given us something that we are able to withstand when calamity comes. We are able to withstand when evil comes because this evil will be here whether you believe it or not. You remember we were taught the two extremes. That there is one extreme that sees the devil in everything. The way you're looking at me, Mukalimani. Yeah, the way you're looking at me is suspect. There must be a devil somewhere. And now there is also the other extreme. You know, so, so we have that we have to check out the two extremes. The one which thinks that there is devil in everything and the other one which thinks that the devil does not exist. So there are, you, you know, you still get the same beating. <laughs> you still, you, whether you, you see, if you, if you choose to go to these two extremes, you still get the same beating. So when the devil is coming, because of this whole armor that we are going to learn today, we are going to be very much prepared. Yeah? We say that in this kingdom, we take the war times to the devil. We don't wait for him to come and destroy us and we are almost, you know, you are the one now fleeing. And the Bible says, flee. Eh? You know the devil should be fleeing from, now you are the one, you know, you're, you're fleeing every time. It's, yeah, you let and you run. Um, you know, so we should, you know, we should, uh, after today, that should obviously be be over. So let's look at the first, the first um, armor, part of the armor. The belt of truth. So verse 13, um, uh, verse 14. So stand therefore, having your loins gut about with truth. Let's go to verse 11. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So pastor has been teaching us along and, and you know he has been telling us of this that the devil uses tricks so when he goes to uh, Eve did God really say so he will use tricks on you the wiles of the devil that is how he survives in ensuring that um, he keeps us where he wants defeated that's his work you know he is already condemned so he has nothing to lose remember the devil has already lost so he has nothing to lose. So if you let him, you're the one losing. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah? So, put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So now verse 13, he tells us, we have taken to you the whole armor of God that he may be, uh, let's go to 14. Stand there for having your loins guard about with the truth. You know, so this is what we call the belt of the truth. And we had that picture of a Roman soldier. And we had a very good discussion in the morning about skirts and trousers. That uh, these preachers would, you know, they, they are suggesting we go back here. I don't think I'm for that suggestion. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you're for that suggestion, but uh, it's a skirt. Where do I start? You know, when your babies, uh, you know, when your babies, your times don't even know is this a girl or a boy because most of the time they have been, they are all in some, not skirts, some to, to shorts or to trousers, so you are not sure. But at least for the boys, they are never put, they are never, they never wear a skirt. But for the, the girls now, they also have the two shorts. So you are never really sure. So you just say it's a cute baby. Because you may say he and it's a she. <laughs> you know? So now they're telling us to go back here. <laughs> that actually in the old times, men used to wear this. Skirts. So the belt of truth, if you look at the belt, you can see the belt, was really not to hold the skirt. Because, you know, it's part of the... the, the, the way they used to wear it, if you look at those... So it's not old. And, and you know, at least for now, we know uh, the belts are really, these belts we have, they are really to hold the, especially if you've done the 21 days of fasting. <laughs> you really need the belt yeah, because the truth. So he was giving us an example that there is a preacher who was preaching and saying how this belt of truth means that we need to cover the shame because the truth may fall. You know, <laughs> but that's not what you're talking about here. The belt of truth is the word of God. You know, the Bible says that the entrance of your word giveth light. 
and you know gives understanding to the simple so we need to have this word in us we need to read and soak into the word of god john 17 verse 17 to 19 sanctify them through the truth thy word is truth as thou hast sent me into the world even so have i also sent them into the world and for their sakes i sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth go to 17 and we just focus there sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth thy word is truth and you know now david you understand him saying that your word is true that you have declared things and they have stood you know and they have happened whatever you've said whatever you've proclaimed has happened this is the belt and so looking at that roman soldier if you look at the belt the belt was actually to put in tools the belt is not to hold the skirt from falling or the trouser from falling and remove all the shame yeah i remember now i don't know if it's in leviticus where uh, is it the levites who are being told if you go up you need to cover yourself well so that when you're going up people don't yes that's not what you're talking about so and, and and you know if you think about a soldier and you can give us maybe the other one we were looking at for the marines i think it give us a better understanding of of that now look at so the belt you can see and and for those of of us i hope we are many who watch this this kind of movies now i used to nowadays there is no time <laughs> to do that so they use the belt to actually put um the tools maybe there's a knife there's a pistol here there are all those the magazines and all those um so if you think about it you really need to know where something is you know they even put a water bottle so you could get you really need to get the magazine out of the pistol and then you pull out the water bottle <laughs> <laughs> and you're in front of fire i don't know what is going to happen it becomes a, a birthday shower. <laughs> you think you came for a party. <laughs> the party is going to be on you. <laughs> yeah? So, you really need to know your word. Because as this belt, you really need to know where the tool is. Because at every instant, you have to be thinking very fast on what he's saying. So now you see Jesus. Jesus really knew his word. So when the devil comes, he says, it is written. He's not, it's not the time to start thinking. Remember, when we are starting these, uh, these verses, the Bible is saying, put on the whole armor. So we are putting it, so that we may be able to withstand the days of evil. So these days, we are preparing for a war. We are not in war at this point. We are preparing. So when you prepare, you even have to know in your head, okay, this is where I put the magazine, this is where the pistol is, this is where the knife is, this is where the water bottle is. Especially the water bottle. <laughs> yeah? So that you don't remove it when you're supposed to be getting out something else. So, we are preparing. So I wake up and I read the word. Why are we studying the word? Because the entrance of his word giveth light. So I need this light so that when the devil comes, I'm able to remove, to, to give, now to speak that word. So that's why Jesus is able to say it is written. Because he has been having this word in him he has been preparing now you if you're waiting for that time uh when now the devil is already here it's when you're starting to think okay eh, what was i supposed to say <laughs> he will give you a beating like what were those sons who were given a beating by the demons <laughs> yes they were given a very bad beating jesus we know paul we know who are you yeah <laughs> so don't wait for a beating yes so study the word Put in the word. Because the devil comes with lies and deceit. Without the truth, you will always, you know, with this truth, you will always defeat him. Yeah? John 8, 32. John 8, 32. Yeah, John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And you remember the example pastor always is giving us, that you know, this is not, he is not saying you shall be set free you'll be made free. Because being set free is like that prisoner who just comes out of a prison. You know, they are set free. They just move out. You know, but he is going to make you free so that you're totally free. You're getting into something else. You're not just moving out and that's it. <laughs> you are, the, the, the gates have been opened. The prison gates have been opened and nothing else. You, you know, you're just set free. You know, it's like you are handcuffed 
and then now you're just set free, the handcuffs are down, you know, but he makes you free. So he says, you know, come and I'll make you. So it's not just, it doesn't end by the point of being released. You know, being released is just one point. And he tells us that, you know, he is bringing us into his marvelous light. So when you become a new creation, you're not just getting out of somewhere into nowhere. He is getting you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you have to see that. So that's why it is, he shall make you, that truth will make you free. Because it's replacing something. It's replacing thoughts that you had. It's replacing notions that you had, uh, misconceptions about life. Like we've been going through the series of forgiveness. Now when you learn it, when hey, you start really forgiving people, you realize you've not been forgiving people. Yes, you've just been deciding to put it in as men. We have nothing, a nothing box. I know for ladies, you may not understand this. We really have a, something called a nothing box. We can throw things there and for some reason, just focus on other things and then pick it when we need to. It's very nice to be a man. <laughs> if I was to try this again, I would still be a man. Yeah, so you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's the belt of truth. So read your word. Ensure that Aseno is well. We are preparing for war. So some of us are good at least wherever we are. We are, we are doing a bit, but we, you know, if we have to, be, to keep being increased, we need to keep preparing more. If you are going to attack higher uh, countries which have more power than you, you need to keep preparing more. You never see, you know, even if there is no war in a country, you'll never see countries relaxing. They are keeping improving their weapons. Every time they are making sure that they have the right things. So the belt of truth. Verse 14 still, um, Ephesians 6 verse 14, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. The second thing is the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate. If there is one thing that has really transformed my life is this issue of righteousness. If you sat under the word under our pastor, by now this thing, you know, it has almost transformed your whole life. And, and Pastor was giving us, you know, the difference that righteousness is your ability to stand before God without any feeling of guilt or inferiority. That righteousness is your ability to stand before God without any feeling of guilt or inferiority. 2 Corinthians 5.21 2 Corinthians 5.21 for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we, may, we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For he hath made him to be sin for us. It's imputed. He has become sin for us. We were that sin. You know, we were the people in sin. Now he has become sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So outside him, you can't be made the righteousness of God. Yeah, outside Christ there is no way. It is only in him. That's why it's imputed. Because he is becoming sin so that I don't have that sin. So that, that sin is not imputed on me. So he is taking sin and imputing righteousness to me. Yeah. So we need the breastplate of righteousness. And we go back to our God. Let's go back to our Roman soldier. No, let, let's not use the marine for this one. <laughs> yeah our Roman, so you can see the breastplate of righteousness. You know, it protects the heart. It protects this, the, what is this called? The cervical area, you know, the heart. And, you know, the Bible says, guard your heart, for from it flows all the issues of life. Yeah? So this breastplate is more of a bulletproof. It keeps your heart okay because if from your heart is it's where everything is flowing, then you really need to be right because it could start flowing negative things. Yeah? Just remembered something now. <laughs> you know when, when you read this verse, for us who are not as big, we are very encouraged. Yeah? Uh, verse 12, what does... <laughs> Go to verse 12. 6 verse 12. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Now, some of us, 
first. I'm not saying that you're, I'm not able to fight you. <laughs> you know, Sam is looking at me and thinking, that's what I, no, I don't mean that. But if you're small, you're very encouraged. If we were to fight flesh and blood, some of us could be disadvantaged. <laughs> Felix, <laughs> yeah? Some of us could be very disadvantaged. We may not have that flesh and blood or a lot of flesh and blood. <laughs> yeah, we may not have a lot of it. We just have some part of, you know, we have some good one. And I'm not saying now you come and try. You may be shocked. <laughs> Looks could be deceiving. Thank you, mama. Looks could be deceiving. Yeah, so let's go back to our righteousness. So we are saying that the breast of righteousness, um, uh, it's a, I love God. The breast of righteousness, you know, here to ensure that all of us, he says that there is no favoritism. And every day I keep proving this thing to be right. God has no favoritism. So he has ensured we are not going to fight a flesh and blood war. We will fight a fight where everybody can participate. Even ladies who don't have muscles. Yes, you know, I was told that, you know, ladies really don't have, you know, those serious muscles. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> Even Beth tells us, as much as she'll do the exercises, the structure of the muscles of a lady and a man are different. Yours are going to become something different. So don't worry about, Beth is with me in this. <laughs> Beth is with me on this one. Yes, I am still struggling to, to do the, you know, the daily 20 minutes, but she is with me on this one, yeah? So the breastplate of uh, righteousness, it guards our heart. It's like a bulletproof. And we say that righteousness is your ability to stand before God without any feeling of guilt. So we have been imputed righteousness, why? Now you understand in Romans 8, 1, when it says that now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because when I stand God, you see, the biggest thing that would have is that you go to pray in the morning or you go to seek God and you're fearing and you feel like you're unworthy. Let me tell you, you won't be able to pray. Actually, most of the people who just drew away is because they felt they were unworthy. So you had a guilt consciousness. But when you realize that this righteousness, you don't need to work on it, you know, then you are free to approach God at any one moment. That you don't need, you know, to feel that, you, you know, hey, I, I really thank God I'm in this dispensation. Because I think the Israelites, they had to cleanse themselves, I don't know how many days. You know the ceremonial cleansing that they used to do? Now you can imagine if you're going to do that. Every single time. I need to approach God. To Naza Kuoga lady. It's, it's. You know, but now I know I, I have the righteousness of Christ. So I don't need to worry so much about uh, Kuoga. <laughs> yes, I don't need to worry about Kuoga. I just need to know that I am right. So I will stand before him and we are going to discuss the matters that we have to discuss. Proverbs 4.23 Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of, of life. And there is one version which says that your heart determines the boundaries of your life. So you will flow as far as your heart is right. Or as far as your heart is the state of your heart. So, you know, if you're struggling with unforgiveness, you know, you will flow to that person to that extent that you'll just see them and say, I'll just smile, a very fake smile. And you know, human beings, we've learned how to do to fake everything. You can really fake a smile very well. Ah, uh, and you just say hi, and you felt nothing, totally nothing. You know the the, the the hearts of stone. That is what we are talking about. If you are dropped like this, you just break. Give You remember you are taught how I, the heart of stone breaks because it's hard. If you drop down a stake, it will do nothing, and that's why God needs to remove your heart of stone and give you. Yeah, so, you know, your heart determines the boundaries of life. So, that's why we have to guard it with this breastplate of righteousness, knowing that you're okay with God. You have the right standing with God. You're not judging yourself to go with, uh, before God. Because remember, you know, our theme this year, Isaiah 40. So, we are supposed to be getting renewed. And, and, and in this Christianity, 
We are being renewed by God. So imagine I'm not able to go before God because I'm thinking I am guilty. So who, how am I renewing my strength? It means if I get tired, I really get tired. Because there is no way for me to renew myself. Because the only way is to renew myself in his presence. So Psalm 91, you know, David says, He that dwelleth in the presence of the Most High, he shall abide by the shadows of the Most High. So if I'm not able to go to this presence, how do I live? So we need this breastplate of righteousness. Your mind has to really conceive this and understand it, that I am right. So 2 Corinthians, it's what, 5.17. Therefore, even a man be in Christ, behold, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. I have to really believe this. I have to really believe this. Because if I don't sort out that, I will live a defeated life. Because where I'm supposed to get my source, I am not able to approach it. Imagine you have a father. You can't approach it to tell them, I need one, two, three. So what will you be doing? No wonder people steal and go to do those things. Because now there is a source. And this source has things. But you can't approach them because you're thinking I'm guilty. And my father is not going to give me. No, throw away that mindset. Know that you're righteous. You're right. And he has made you right. And it is right. So don't, you know, the beauty of this righteousness, the imputed one, is that it's his. You know, because if it was mine, I have to keep judging. The way I did it, was it to his standard? Yeah? Was it to his standard? But now I don't have to worry about that. It's not my standard I'm looking at. The righteousness I'm getting is that blood of the lamb. You know, he says, the worthy is the lamb. That is the righteousness that I'm going in to approach him. That's why I say I approach him with confidence. Now let's approach the throne with confidence. Because we understand we have imputed righteousness. Philippians 2, 13, 46, it is God who worketh both in us to will and to do. So I don't really have, I don't have to push myself to, it's not me. If, if I just claim his righteousness, <laughs> he will give me everything I need to do, to will, first to will and also to do. Now you understand if you're in drugs, you just, you know, when you come under Christ, he's going to give you the will to stop it and also to do now the right thing. So you don't need to really work. You know, these are the righteousness where you're working. The one you have to keep washing and thinking about the bathroom. Hey, hey, what did they used to do in those cold seasons? You know, my secondary school was somewhere in the hills, in the Abadeas. Hey, second term. <laughs> hey, those bathrooms had cracks. <laughs> I am not saying anything, but they had cracks. Because that water, the place would ice. I don't know if it's your body you have to take to the ice or it's the ice you have to take and pour on your body. <laughs> you have to choose. Or you just decide, hey, let the whole crack. You know? So I don't know how those, the Israelites used to survive in cold seasons. Maybe their place they had no cold seasons. They were, oh, they were in the desert. Ah, your wise woman of God. So that's the breastplate of righteousness. And so remember, we are saying we have to take the full armor. So we are not taking bits. You're not going to say that I'm going to now know that I'm righteous and then I don't take the word. Because without the word, I'll not be able to fight the devil when he comes, when the days of evil come. So we are taking the full armor. The third part of the armor. Ah, this was one of the most interesting. I had never seen it before today morning preaching. Most likely when you had never seen it. It's verse 15. Ephesians 6 verse 15. And your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. With the preparation of the gospel. And pastor here, you know, for the first time I saw it. I don't know which Bible I've been reading, but I've read, I think, the Bible twice in a year now. This is the third year I'm reading for the whole of it. Not this verse or this scripture. This one maybe I've read for so long. I've never seen the prepare, the preparation of the gospel. Meaning we are preparing He's not talking about the gospel, but the preparation of the gospel. I so just remembered one of the things that pastor was telling us in the morning that when, you know, most of the time when people are thinking about this armor and that you're wearing, they think it's really wearing, you see, the breastplate of, you know, the, 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 the what? The breastplate of righteousness. The, you know, I'm wearing, I wear, I wear, I wear, you know, I wear, and they are pulling. <laughs> 
That was so hilarious. <laughs> Not that you wake up in the morning and for 30 minutes you're just wearing. I wear. I wear the, the helmet of salvation. So you even put it there and you hold your head. <laughs> oh, it could really be. Eh? <laughs> now if somebody has been doing that for a year, they have really held their body. <laughs> yeah. They, are, they, they should be fashion designers. They live this. <laughs> yeah, they should just go and become fashion designers. Yeah. So the preparation uh, of the gospel of peace um, showed with the preparation. So, and he was telling us about, um, you know, it's your feet. So if you think about the Roman soldier, now going back, uh, I don't know if we got a good photo of the, the shoe that the soldiers used to wear. Did we get a good one? Or we are using the same. But if you look at it the way it was, you know, it comes up to what did we call this part? The show? The sha? The shin. Kizungu. The shin. Yes. Just below the calf. Okay. Yeah. So the shin. So you see, are good. So the shoes would come up to that, that level. And it's because we, they need to work together. And he was giving us the difference with this type of a shoe and the shoe of, um, of the sportsmen. You know, they need to be very light. They're just concerned about the mobility of the feet. Yeah? But now this one, it's because you need, you really need them to work together, the shin and the feet. So that when you're moving, you know, it's not one part, but the whole body is really moving. You see? So he was telling us that, you know, this, uh, that's how the Roman soldiers were designed. Everything is really designed. And when Paul is even writing this and he was in prison, he was looking at, you know, at that soldier and, and giving that image of how it should be on our part. So we should always be prepared with the gospel. We need to know how to, you know, if right now, I was, Pope's pastor called me yesterday evening. I have sat in the service with you to listen to this. I can tell you, you know, I told him, let me just first soak in that shock. Up to now, I'm still soaking in the shock. <laughs> Almost said, shocking in the shock. <laughs> hey, I thank God. Hey, English. Nairobi has really transformed us. I used to tell these people, I used, you know, my primary school. If you went to a primary school, I know some of us didn't go to a primary school. We used to study English in Kiswahili. Actually, it's only Kiswahili we didn't study in, in Kikuyu. No, yes, in Kikuyu. Thank you, in Kikuyu. Everything we used. So the teacher would say, we were reading the, he, was it called what? Hello, children. Oh, mister. So he would be, <laughs> let me tell you, the Lord has moved some of us very, very far. <laughs> we bless the Lord. So he would start, the hair and the, and the who? What was that? The, or even the hair and the hyena. Let me tell you, that was my class. He, I think when I went to boarding, really God, really God worked on me. You can, and now you see Nairobi. There's somebody was telling, I came to Nairobi the first time when I came to work after four four. They are like, no, you are born here. Now I'm born here. He, you know, even here, even the condemners was told, just be born again. It's okay, I've been born again to the city. Now. I can say the soaking of the, the of the shock. You, you are confusing me. <laughs> I am trying to move out. You, you are trying to take me back. Yes, yes. Let's focus the the soaking of the shock. <laughs> yeah. So um, we need to know. We need to know the preparedness of the gospel. We need to know that if we are called forth, we can tell, we can speak this gospel. If we are asked something by anyone, we are able to speak it. If somebody needs an interpretation, we are able to know. Now you see the Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. When the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, teleports him, we should have some teleportation. Hey, there's some, you know, there are some things I think now, I creep, like teleportation. I just need to and go and come back. Yeah, so when Philip, uh, the Holy Spirit trans, <laughs> Nigerians actually know how to do it in their movies. They should just teach us. I, and then we just go and enter into this thing. <laughs> yeah, but Philip, uh, you know, you, this Ethiopian eunuch is from a pilgrimage and, you know, he is coming and he is reading and he can't understand. And Philip asked him, do you understand the thing that you read? 
And he says, how can I? Unless someone comes and explains to me. So imagine without this preparation of the gospel of, uh, of peace. If you didn't prepare. Remember we are saying, we are wearing these armor so that we withstand the days of... So we are preparing. So when somebody needs to understand the gospel, we are there to explain to them. Because we have been preparing. So we are not waiting for Sunday to come and read. Yeah, we are not waiting for Sunday to come and read. Anytime we are called forth. If pastor needs you to preach now, you are ready to preach. Because you've been preparing and you're not waiting for that day. Let me tell you, after after the first service so I went and sat in the office there trying to read. Let me tell you, I tried. I just closed the book and came to the service. I realized uh, this is not working. <laughs> that trying to gather and you know pastor just kept passing Yota, you'll be okay mama Yota, you'll be okay and you know that's what i'm telling you it's very good to be a son it's very good to be a son because you just listen to your father and your mother and whatever they say ah pastor said i'll be okay i just move and come to the worship session now look at me being fine <laughs> yes pastor said i'll be fine so i walk in authority of my father my father believes i'll be fine I am fine. Anything else? I don't know. It's not fine. So be a student. Prepare. Study the word. Study the word. Study the word. You know, he was giving us the example of South Korea. Dr. Um, Hongi you know, they thought that they had a spirit of poverty. But, you know, they decided to go and be very radical soul winners. They started so doing, and you know, if you look at South Korea right now, we are always talking, South Korea and Malaysia were at the same place with Kenya. Now, I don't know, during independence, we are at the same place. Now, look at them, we can't catch up with them. They are now almost part of the first world. We are somewhere in the third. <laughs> By the which are the second world. They only focus on the first and third. Now, be a student. Ah. That's, it's very nice to be a preacher. I never thought I would say those words. Now I'm saying, it's very nice to be a preacher. Because I can tell you, go be a student. And you know, you have nothing to do than, than go and be a student. So the preparation of the gospel of peace. And you see, it's the gospel of peace. Ah, I love this one. Ah, you should have, we are almost going back to, we, do we go back to the first one? <laughs> now I feel like I can explain it better. But you see that shoe. You see that? You see the way it holds up to here? I think there are some ladies' shoes I see now. Hey, but I don't know. How do you people put those things? They have so many streets. Right, left, corner, center. <laughs> There's one I saw. And then I found it first dismantled. And then I wondered, is it the same thing that transforms and becomes something that is tied? Ay, you take 20 minutes. You, you prepare in five minutes. You take 20 minutes to just put on the shoe. What is wrong? What is wrong? Uh, uh, what is wrong? Eh? Preparation. <laughs> You've prepared enough. You know it. You know how it's supposed to go. So you just sit. Hey, I feel it's like, hey, it's like just. Yeah, so it's the gospel of peace. So that every person you interact with and share this gospel, they are going to, to have peace. You know, he says he gives us peace that we can't even understand. So imagine this is what you're giving. That God can put you in a bubble of peace. That you're just peaceful. I remember in Sonu elections, for those of us who went to University of Nairobi, when we had real student politics. Nowadays I hear they elect some council. I think appointed by the school. Now our time people used to come with machetes and all those things. Yes. Now that was our normal politics. I even remember there is one, because I, I was part of the Christian Union, the executive, we even did a debate at some point, and we were facilitating. So they would come, they were very peaceful when they came, but midway they are like, no, there is too much peace. There is too much peace. <laughs> there is too much peace. Yeah, so people just, I even remember during voting, there is one time, so if there are no fracas after a while, they just cause it. Two people there inside, two goons, they just start. No, it's too peaceful. I know you know some, some of those people. Joey is laughing because we were in those politics. We saw them. And so they just, one hits the other. And now he is bleeding. Now they start, a, they were just peaceful. They just felt there is too much peace. I pray that God may give you too much peace. A lot of peace. 
a lot. So this gospel, when you're interacting with people and sharing with it, it's supposed to give them peace. Your world needs peace. People need to not be stressed unnecessarily. Yeah? Preparation of the gospel of peace. So be a student so that you can explain to everybody. Yeah? Paul says, when I go to Romans, I become like them. When I go to the Jews, I become like Be able to explain to everybody. Both the learned, the unlearned. You will meet everybody. For, for those of us who go for anakazo. Yes, anakazo is soul winning. Yeah, so we've been taught to always go and soul win out there. You know, you meet every kind of person. Some understand you, some don't. Some understand English, some don't. You have to even be prepared in Swahili. Now, Mukalimani, you may need to teach us quite a bit of this Kalimani thing. And we just say, hey, need to let me hey, There's something we were told. I can't remember the word. Hello? Eh? I don't, I can't remember. Maybe most likely the Holy Spirit will remind me when we are going and we laugh a bit. So we love laughing. We love laughing here. Now, hey, if you don't love laughing, where now are you going to? How will you survive here? If you just want one serious face <laughs> and you're not. Yes, we laugh here, we smile. Yes, we smile a lot. Patrick, we smile a lot. It's, um, yes, joy is part of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we decide to go with the fruits. We love to eat nice things like joy. Number four, the shield of faith. This is another key highlight. Verse 16, uh, Ephesians. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So he's telling us that there is a shield of faith. That with this one we can quench all the fiery darts. You know, he's a Mishale. This one I may need to interpret a bit now to become the Mkalimani. <laughs> hey, I don't envy your work. <laughs> there are things that pastor says even in my head it can't come. <laughs> totally. And then you say it, I'm like, hey, by the way, Yet Kiswahili was my best subject. Actually, I love, I think I never struggled with that subject. I knew everything. Until now. I realized Pastor says something, I don't know how to say it, to interpret it. Yeah, so the shield of faith. So he's saying that take the shield of faith so that you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yeah. And he was telling us, Pastor was teaching us that this shield that is talked here. You know, there are many shields. Uh, if you go now to that, the Roman soldier. And today we have a good, we have a good prop. We have to keep checking. We have some art. You know, CBC has art. A lot of art. Hey, the things my brother, I see him making. I also don't know some of them. Hey, I'm like, wow. They should, they should give us some back our school fees. <laughs> what were we reading in school? Hey. Yeah, so he was telling us that shield. Uh, the shield that is, the word of the shield that is used there in Greek, it's not these smaller ones, you know, the ones that you're just able to uh, to stop those. It means, you know, there is a bigger shield which is like a door. It means like a door, like it's big enough. Like if you look at those uh, war movies, some of you who have watched them, you'll see like there's one that you could see and it even covers them. You know, so it like, it covers you, your whole body. Uh, that's the shield uh, that, that he's talking about. So verse, verse 16, let's go back to verse 16. Yeah, so above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all, all the fiery darts. You see with the smaller one, somebody may, you know they may pass with your small muscle. Okay, for the warriors, they had big muscles. Yes, they would, now Beth will help us. I don't know what muscle, they could pass with a bit of a muscle here because you know it's not covering. But you know that now this shield, it covers you. So you're able to be covered from top to down. Um, and, and faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. And something else that I learned today. I think I had never seen it. Faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. So faith does not come by the word of God. But faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. So it's the hearing that is coming by the word of God. Now this hearing bringeth faith. 
So you need to preach to yourself. Tell yourself this word of God. Listen to it. And he was telling us that, you know, listen to the sermons. Because the more you're hearing, the hearing is what brings faith. Think about even the power of testimonies. It's because we hear people, things are happening. We believe. You know, they overcame with their word of testimonies. So I hear somebody, you know, they were believing so for something. You, you had the testimony here this morning. I will be able to go and actually believe. The word of God was necessarily not said here. But by me hearing. By hearing. So faith. You know God says that without faith you can't even please him. Yeah. And, and you know in Hebrews 11.1. One, um, now faith is the substance of being hoped for. The evidence of being seen. I really need faith to live. Because if, you know, if I'm expecting something. If I can't believe that it will happen. I don't know how I'll be able to survive to to get to it. I don't know how people get patience without having faith. Because you can't just wait. You really have to have faith to believe in this. Not you can't you can't actually please God without faith. This thing now I know. Because you have to really believe of what he is saying. So pastor was giving the uh, my example that you know I I wanted to leave job and then you know now I didn't leave. <laughs> Fast forward. I'm still there. And I had to struggle with that for quite a while, just thinking about, okay, so I don't leave. So he, all these things I had planned, he, back to zero or back to no plan. And the only plan I have is God's plan because if he's saying I don't leave now, then he is the only plan because my plan is not to be here. So you really have to have faith to please him. Because I can decide, no God, okay, I can't just live without a plan. And I have one written. Now he is telling me, no, leave that plan. He, I'm the plan. So you have to really believe. And he says, you know, without faith you can't please him. And you have to believe that he is. And that he is a reward of those, you know, that diligently seek him. So you have to really believe in God. To fully trust him. You, I don't think you have any other choice. Yeah? And so we've said that faith comes by hearing. In hearing the word. Moses is in the wilderness with a stick. And he lifts it. And the sea parts. I think, you know, some of the good things that happens with this faith thing, you just, you, you just hear God and you act. Because you have to start explaining to people that I'm going to lift this stick and we are going to walk. These people are looking, they are seeing the Egyptians with their many horses and the, the chariots coming. You, you're telling them that I have a stick that can make a way through this. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you know, kudawaya, kudawaya. There's a wire which has just flipped. But you see, it's because he kept, he, he has done how to hear. So he had the word of God and he knew. And it says, the Bible says that his word is sure. So if, you, if, if, you, if you've been preparing, remember we are talking about the armor and we are saying we are preparing. Now you understand when he says, when you go, don't be worried. He will tell you which way to go. Go to the right or to the left. Because you've been preparing to hear. So you know how to hear God. So when he tells you, you're not shocked. So when Moses, God tells him, lift, lift the stick. For him, he's in a totally different world with the Israelites. Then they don't know this hearing. And they don't know the implication of acting on what you had. So he just leaves them and just acts. Yeah, so faith. So you need that shield of faith. You need to really believe. Believe. And you know, the faith shall quench all darts. You can quench all darts. Yeah, yeah. Now you you understand when David is saying in Psalm 91 that he shall not fear the arrow that comes by day or the pestilence that walketh in darkness. He has learned to hear, so he is not worried. The fifth part of this armor, just about to close. The helmet of salvation, verse 17, Ephesians 6, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God so we start with the helmet of salvation before we come to the sword of the spirit 
you know, the helmet. Now, if you are ah, good, awesome, we have a nice one. The helmet of Salif, if you look at the helmet, it protects the mind, the head. So it's protecting you. You know, your most important fatic- faculty, not fatico, faculty. <laughs> what is fatico? I don't know. I don't. The beauty of it, I'm a lawyer. Lawyers were able to create English and give meaning. And you can do nothing about it. It is just as lawyers. Yes, we go and argue. You are small English, you know what the word means. Ask as lawyers. It does not mean that. It means something totally different. So, <laughs> and we love it. Because we can keep discussing the word and for three days in court. And we have not gotten a solution. The word and. Our work is very nice. So he is protect, so he's telling us we have the helmet of salvation. It protects our mind, our brain. You know, it's the most important part of your body because you need to be in the right, you need to be stable in the right, you know, sense of thinking. You need to know. You know, even he says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. You need soberness to be able to make the right decisions. Yeah. So you need this helmet of salvation. Um, and, and, you know, he was telling us now the seal. Uh, we had the other picture of a seal. That one of the tests that they have to go through is the test of the mind. Yeah, we have to know, are you okay? Are you really okay? And we can't even trust that you're okay. We have to test you. You can't just tell us, I'm okay. And we just agree, no, we test you to really know, are you okay? You know, even in murder cases, we tell these people, go and be tested. They don't tell us they won't. We tell, the court tells them, first go and get a test. The doctor needs to tell us, are you okay? We don't know also. You may not be okay. So they have to go through that. First Thessalonians 5, 8. You know, he tells us, you know, the hope of salvation. First Thessalonians 5, 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. So now, in Ephesians, he is telling us that we need to put a helmet of salvation. In First Thessalonians, now he is telling us this actually helmet is that hope. It's hope. You know, without hope, you really can't live long. You have to really hope for something. Even Hebrews 11, 1 is telling us that faith is, you know, is, is believing in something you, you know, it's um, something hoped for. Without hope, there is no faith. Yeah? There is no faith. So you really need this hope. And it's the hope of salvation. It's because, you know, he says in, uh, where was, this is Colossians 1, 27, that Christ in me, the hope of glory, if I'm hoping to glory in anything, it's this Christ in me. So I have him. It's, you know, the only hope I have in glory is Christ in me. Because he's the one who makes me to will and to do. You know, I have to really hope and believe, Romans 8, 28, that everything works together for good. Pastor was giving us an example, I think it's last week, that you know, at times mistakes, at times after you're done with the mistakes and God is done with you, you even think that was the original idea. Because it has become so good that you actually think that was actually the original plan. You may even abort and say, but this I think was the plan. It may not have been the plan, but it's because of this that everything works together for the good of them. So, you know, this hope is what makes you say in Psalm 34, I bless the Lord at all times. There's nothing else. Why, why, why are you blessing the Lord in a time of calamity? It's because of hope. Because you know you're not going to, to be there forever. You know that you will fall, but you will stand up. The Bible says even seven times. We will fall and stand up. So it does not matter. I will bless the Lord at all times. In good times, in bad times, I still bless the Lord because I know it's just a matter of time. So it's the hope of this salvation that we have. You know, even just the thought of we are thinking that we are going to heaven because of this salvation. That hope alone, I can't, you know, I can't keep wallowing because I know there's a better place. So I better enjoy what I have now. Because even if I keep following, I know there is a better place. So let me just enjoy whatever, the bad, the good, as we walk, I'm enjoying them. I, because I have hope of a better life. Where I don't have to worry about all these things. So you have to be very positive. Yes, be very positive. Don't allow any negative minds. Because you have the hope of salvation. You have the hope of salvation. And lastly, the sword of the word of God. 
still verse 16, uh, verse 17, still verse 17, Ephesians 6, verse 17, and the sword of the spirit. And pastor was teaching us that this is the only offensive tool that we have. You know, we have to be both offensive and defensive. Yeah, we defend ourselves, you know, by protecting. You know, defense is protecting. Offense is when you're going to fight. Offense is taking the war to the other side. Defense is, you know, you're protecting that we are not scored. You know, in football, if you're in the defense, you're protecting that this ball does not cross this place. Yeah, so all these other um, parts of the armor we've been learning, they have been very defensive. We have been protecting our hearts. We have been wearing the, the belt of, you know, of truth. We have been reading the word. Why? Because we are preparing us. Because all these things are to defend us. When the enemy comes, we know what to say. But now, here we are talking about the sword. So the sword, if you look at the sword, you know it's supposed to pierce someone. Or now, we didn't go for it, so don't judge me. I'm, I'll be better next time. I'll come knowing the martial arts and how to do those things. For now, you just see in your head. Just see it in your head when they are, they, those, those karate people are using the swords. So they are the sword of the, is, uh, of the word of God. That we need to speak this word. So you've carried it as the belt of truth. You know, you've, you've learned all the word, you've put it in your heart, and it's, you know, it has come and truth has come to you. You've known that that truth is now setting you free. Speak it. We are not speaking the word enough. Speak the word enough to every situation. Speak it. So the devil takes Jesus wherever he says, it is written. And in three strokes, you know, he has pierced three times, it is written. The devil can't stand it. If you keep piercing the devil with this, it is written, he won't stand you. Now you see why you need the belt of truth. Because you prepared. The entrance of his word had brought light to you. So when he comes now, you speak it. The sword of the word of God. There's so much power in the word of God. Yeah? We believe so we speak. Yeah, it's Paul who is telling us, you know, we believe so we speak. We believe so we speak. So we've been, we've been wearing the full armor. We've been coming, you see, believing, you look at faith, we just talked about faith. So faith, we have been believing. Now we are speaking. So we are not speaking, but we are believing. So we have believed. So look, we have gone through, through the, the belt of truth. We have read this word. We have put it in our hearts. Now, by hearing it over and over, we have believed. After we believe, now we speak it. We go out there and pierce the devil. He can't have a space in our lives. So if he gives you trouble, now that time you're not believing. When the devil is giving you trouble, it's now no time to believe. It's time to now use the sword. Hit him hard. Tell him it is written. By his stripes I was healed. By his stripes I was healed. It is written. That's why Pastor was telling us the other time about this authority. Is that whatever God needed to do, he has already done it. He has already given. You see, he was telling us, God is not going to give you favor now. He has already given. God is not releasing grace now. He has already released. He has given you grace. You now claim it. Use it. Yeah? The sword of the word of God. You know, David says, I shall live and not die. This is a person who understands the sword. The work of the sword. It has a work. You have now to exercise it. Use it. Don't just, you know, keep saying, that's the devil over there. No, we take the battle to him. Kwani konini. You know, in Ephesians, he's already told us that he has lifted us far above principalities. So, even when we are doing this war, we are not fighting because uh, we are weak. We are just using one of the parts of the armor. Yes. We are, we are not showing, you know, we are now not saying now we are very weak. No. We are using part of the armor that we have so that we can withstand the evil days and after all stand. So that to see talk a vita and then you're very beaten. You know, you're out of all, you're very beaten. He was telling us of the US that the United States, <laughs> you know, um, that verse is not fully, um, what is it, manifested in them because they go to wars. By the time they are back, they have lost so many people. You know, the world is hating them because you took a war to some, now some innocent children are dying and all these things. You know, but he's telling us as a Christian, after I'm done with this war, 
I will stand. I still stand. In short, we go to war, he was telling us with, with white clothes. You know, you know, you know, now if you think about it, I was there seated thinking, I'm going with the white cloth. <laughs> Don't you love my mind? I love also it. Now, I was thinking if I go out, so there is blood. You know, if I have to use a sword, there's some blood going to come out. We are in a war. There's some mud going to come. But Pastor is saying that in this walk of ours, we enter with white clothes. We come out with them white, no smoke, no nothing. As white as they were. That we need to get, that's the authority we carry. Yes. What, what was he saying? Ah, the bishop bowed. Yeah, and we come and yeah, we drop the bike and then you know. So th- that's how it's supposed to be. Because we have won the full armor. And he was telling us, now if you go to verse, should be 18, that you know, the Bible says praying, uh, let's go to 18, Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. That some people have mistaken this issue of praying to think that now, you know, praying is the, is, is, is the warfare. So that's why people tell you, I've been in warfare, meaning they have been praying. They have actually replaced the word warfare with praying and fasting. That, that's it. You know now what righteousness does now if you think about now righteousness. You now know that it is not because you've been praying so much that the word works. Or that you know that what you believe is going to work. That the demon is not moving out because you have been so much in prayer. No, it's moving out because you have authority. He has given you authority. So it has to move out. So that when you're going to pray and read the word and do all these things, you're not doing them because that is what gives you, you know, makes, you, makes those things move out, the demons move out and sickness leave. No, you're equipping yourself, you're preparing yourself. So you see the way your mind has been, you know, uh, what, what is the word um, in Romans, transformed. You now approach righteousness, knowing that first I am walking in the finished work of the cross. So if I tell this demon to go, it will go. I don't need to be two years into this to tell the demon to go and to go. You know when you were in high, no, campus again. I think we were in third year or fourth year. We were the class at the top. So I remember we were in the executive. So we went to this mission in Masurra. I think Pastor Agi has talked about this. They were in second year, we were in fourth year. So we were the people they were looking up to. So I remember, I remember there is a time that people were told to, um, People are told to come and line up. We pray for them. Now, by the time I was going to that mission, I didn't believe people fall. I was the people who were sitting like this. When the pastor is coming to pray, I say like this. Yeah? Support system. Because I thought, ah, uh-uh, they just push you. They push you, they push you. So, when we went there and people were being called, <laughs> so the preacher was saying, I am missionaries, come and pray. So, nobody was moving. I was the leader of worship for my campus, the executive. That's why Joy was one of my, my, she was under me. So, now when nobody is going, so I decide, okay, let me pray. See, it's only praying. I just go and pray. I, I can't even remember the first word I said. I just went to take my hand. The person was thrown there. I'm the person. At that way, I had not believed people fall. I just stood like this. I couldn't show them I don't know this thing. <laughs> Imagine now the vision is scared. So I said, okay, maybe it's something. I don't know, but I think it's a mistake. So I went the second time to the, because no, nobody was, so you can imagine, we didn't even have our shares because nobody ever felt someone or power came upon. So we didn't have those people. <laughs> so I went to the second person, I remember. The same thing, they were also thrown. Hey, let me tell you, I almost was running and I couldn't shoot them. So I said, okay, I'll try one more. The third one, let me tell you, I couldn't lay on anyone else. Like here, yeah, I just continued praying. And now, now everybody was running, trying to put people behind because now they, nobody, we had never seen this. I had not, I didn't even believe it, leave alone seeing it. So at least I've known with this righteousness that it's not on me. It's not because I've been praying so much that this works. His word says I have authority. So as long as, you remember now the disciples coming to Jesus and telling him, we found some people removing demons in your name. And they were like, we stopped them. Jesus is saying no. Because it's not about them. It's this name Jesus. The power in that name. 
So you see now my mind is revealed so that I'm not reading the Bible because I need to prove to anybody to anyone anything. I'm not preparing and putting this full armor of God because I need to prove anything. This is what the armor of God does and helps us as we build on understanding our authority, the authority that we have. I want us to welcome mama. Let us welcome mama. Thank you, mama. Thank you so much, Mwali Munyota. Let's celebrate him again.